Well, hello, everybody. I know um, it's unfortunate that I had to start a little bit earlier tonight, but um, I'm going to make this recording available. So as people are able to join, I'm looking forward to that. But um, anyway, I'll just open this in prayer and we'll get a chance to be going through Acts. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray that you would be with us tonight. Um, forgive us of our sins. Thank you for saving us. Pray you hear our prayers. Um, just invite you here and help us to understand your word and scripture ever increasingly in the fashion that you would like. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Well, we're going to be having a very interesting class tonight. And so what I'm going to do is we'll be talking about, uh, we're talking about the, the book of Acts. But before they do that, I'm going to review going over John, since that's what we covered last time. And so just as a reminder, this is we're on lesson number five. And so the bulk of our time will be focused on going through the book of Acts. But we also wanted to have a little bit of time to reflect back on the, the book of John which is it a tremendous gospel, a lot of really interesting material. And you think we had the, the first, the three gospels, what are called the, the synoptic gospels, um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, different points of view. Um, Matthew, one of the apostles, um, Mark, John Mark, which was a um, disciple of Peter, and so sometimes you could call it the, the gospel of Peter, and then you have Luke, um, who was a disciple of Paul, and so you could be thinking of it as the gospel of Paul as well, and then we come to John. John was written later, and so we have a person that was able to reflect for a long period of time on what he was going to, to write, and had the benefit of what was actually provided in the other gospels, and so um, I'm going to just go over briefly the, some, some key quotes from the, the workbook. And so this is why I really would recommend that you get a copy and as you're able to work through that material. And so this is um, the chapter number four of the Gospel of John. And so the things that it, it talks about is it says that um, the, the Gospel of John is a favorite among Christians, and maybe you had this experience that when you first became a Christian or someone that was a seeker, a lot of times people are referred to go ahead and look at the, the Gospel of John. It contains uh, the most famous and often quoted verse of the Bible, John 3.16, and describes the incarnation of Jesus in unique terms. And we see that even starting in the very beginning, the a nice introduction, very elegant introduction that John wrote. I don't think there's any doubt that, that John is the author of, of this gospel, the John, the, the son of Zebedee. And so that's something that you can read about and um, think, reflect back on the things that we covered last week. Um, there's really no compelling reason to reject the testimony of the early church fathers for, and, and so definitely John um, is the, the author of this, this gospel as a reminder that the, the gospels were written, quote, anonymously. And so they were intent just to be talking about the life of Jesus. But we, over time, have, did were able to successfully attribute who the authors were. So John, in terms of the recipient, John likely writes the gospel to Christians expecting the, the constants to reach um, unbe an unbelieving audience via Christian leaders. And so this is like John is writing this down with an evangelical point of view. And they, they, they want the, the words of Christ and the, and the works of Christ to, to bring individuals to a saving faith. And that's very clearly seen in, in the gospel. Um, there's two major sections in the gospel of John. First is a meant to capture the signs elements that is prevalent in Jesus' ministry as portrayed by, by John. And the second part is the, is the focus on the exaltation of Jesus with his passion and, and glory and, and cross and resurrection. So that's a wonderful thing that we can be, be seeing about. And in the middle, 
we can be thinking about this nice transition as the, the story of Lazarus is a foreshadowing of, of the anticipation of what was going to be coming after that. Um, if you may recall, Lazarus, uh, um, a poor individual that died and the, the Lord brought him back to life in a very wonderful story that we get a chance to, to see. And in the latter part of the, the gospel, as is typical of each of the gospels, they have this kind of thing. The opposition to Jesus begins to increase and that's just an ever increasing thing. People come to a saving faith, but then there's also those that, that are fighting against that. Um, so John, the, the son of Zebedee is most likely the author of this fourth gospel. He writes a unique account of the life of Jesus likely seen to evangelize Jewish readers. And so that might've been the first way that he was considering about who would be the intended audience, but then of course, going way beyond that. Um, so the, the canonical gospels are all concerned with presenting Jesus and the ministry to the world. And so the synoptic gospels, the first three gospels, um, and then we, we have um, also in the Gospel of John that the, the Christian doctrine of the divinity of Jesus is developed in John to agree, not found in the other Gospel accounts. So he has a, a lot of theology and very interesting and important things for our faith that we can get a chance to get our arms around. He uses the Greek word theos, and theos is the word in Greek for God. And so one way to... Um, to, so the use of Theo, one way to, to show that God, that John taught that Jesus is God is to notice how he identifies Jesus in certain passages. And there's a lot of different things. If you um, just read through the, the gospel, you're going to be, be seeing this. It, it talks about the authority of Jesus. Not only does John use a term for God to refer to Jesus, but he also refers to, as all the Gospels writers, how Jesus exercises authority over nature as one who stands as God's agent of creation. Jesus had absolute authority over the natural world. And so we, we see the, the different miracles, like the, the very first one, the wedding at Cana, um, turning the water into wine. Um, and then coming back to that same location, having an official whose son was ill and, and, and Jesus heals there. Um, Jesus walking on the water and coming near the boat where the, the disciples were. And it goes on and on and on. And then we have the, um, when Lazarus was ill in Bethany right next to Jerusalem. And so these are the kind of stories what we see the, the works of Jesus being pre presented in a very real way. John also talks about these interesting things like the I am statements that um, Jesus I, I self identifies him with the terms that people would associate with who Yahweh is. And so that comes out very strongly. Um, there are statements um, of figures of speech that are, are portrayed that, that help to us to understand the, the true identity of who Jesus is, of God. Jesus, uh, Jesus is God, and Jesus is man. And so we, we get a chance to, in John's presentation, to see the divinity of, of Jesus in a, in a very intimate and a very appropriate way. John did not present Jesus as anything less than divine. And so that is an important thing for, for us to remember as we're going through the gospel. He, but he did have a functional submission. So there was a, um, a way that he related to the other members of the Trinity. The, he had an intimate relationship with his father. He was obedient to his father. And that's clearly laid out. Um, the, 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 he uses the, the term son of God nine times, which means simply more than just intimacy and submission, but the, the son of God is equivalent to be calling himself the Messiah. And so that's, you can see that in the, the study guide and be reflecting on that. We see images of belief in John's gospel. There are various images that are used to describe the belief in Jesus. And so there's the content of belief, exactly what we're supposed to believe, information about who God is, God as the one who sent Jesus, 
what the Old Testament says. Jesus is the one sent by God. Jesus' name, Jesus himself, get, talking about his nature. Jesus, the, the son of man, that, that, that title of equating him with Messiah. Jesus' miracles, we, we get a chance to see that. Jesus as the Messiah and Jesus, what Jesus says. We get lots of details about his parables um, in an interesting way through the, the Gospel of John. So we, we get a chance to, to study how John presents Jesus as the Son of God. That's a big, important thing that we, we see. And then he has eschatological insights, thinking about the end times. And John has a distinct emphasis on the present reality that those who have believed in Jesus can enjoy eternal life in the present. So that is definitely something we can be experiencing the kingdom of God in the here and now. And so there, there's a reality that, that John makes that quite clear. And then he talks about the Trinity. That's another th key thing here, that there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that are clearly laid out in, in various verses. Um, in the very beginning, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And then we see how um, the Holy Spirit is involved in, 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 in this in John 1, 32. And John bore witness, I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. And so when Jesus was baptized, we see the father, um, we see Jesus and we see the Holy Spirit all there in that one setting. And so there's all kinds of interesting things that we can just benefit as we get a chance to be reading through this gospel. So I just would strongly encourage you to be mindful of this wonderful resource that we have in scripture, the, the testimony of, of the life of who John was. And with that, it's an unfortunate thing that I have to move on and have us be thinking about Acts. And so Acts is the second half of the Gospel of Luke. And so Luke the physician wrote the Gospel of Luke. And then right after that, he, he wrote Acts. And Acts is the first history of the early church. And so you could argue that Luke is in effect a historian, one of the, the very first historians that, that existed. And so um, the, the information that I have here, a couple maps and tables here is right out of the, the ESV study Bible. So I strongly recommend that you take advantage of getting that material. Um, and so here, we can see the, the main themes that, that take place in the, the Acts of the Apostles. It starts out with the, the life of Peter in the beginning. And so Peter is really a large player. And we'll see that with the, the outlines that we'll talk about in more detail. And then it turns into the, the second half into the, the life and ministry of Paul. And Paul um, has his conversion. And then as a believer and follower of Christ and as apostle, he quickly turns his focus towards the Gentiles and, and starts to minister in modern day Turkey, which was called Asia Minor, and then into Southern Europe, um, in Greece, and ultimately in Italy, when he, he heads off to, to Rome. And so this is a context for what we're, we're talking about for this location. Of course, we have the, the greater Palestine area, we have um, Jerusalem, we have the, the ministry home that Paul used in the city of Antioch. And then the, he started to venture out into Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, and then from there worked his way around into to Greece. Um, and we'll be hearing more about some of these locations and as we get a chance to, to study the, the letters. But that's a top level view of, um, so we have Asia Minor, modern day um, Turkey, we have Greece, and then we have Italy. And so ultimately going to, to Rome is, is the, the final place that we, we know about Paul. And so Paul did three 
ministry missionary journeys and each one of them ends up being a little bit longer than the previous one and the first one he starts out um, in, to Antioch he goes to, to Cyprus up um, into to um, Asia Minor starts to go east and hits a variety of towns um, Antioch and notice that there's um, there's two Antiochs. We have an Antioch here in Asia Minor and also the Antioch where Paul started his, his missionary efforts, going to Galatia, Lystia, and, and Der Derby, and then goes back, tracks back similar to the, to the way that he came out um, and ha heads on out from, from there. Um, so that's just a little bit of a snippet for his first missionary journey. And then for the second one, what he does is he takes the land route going up through Asia Minor, hitting a lot of different cities and um, goes all the way around to, into to Greece, spends time in Corinth, goes back to Ephesus, which he spent a, um, a fair amount of time in Ephesus a couple of years and from that location, he actually wrote some of his letters. And so it was like a forward deployed location. He has his, his um, missionary home, if you will, in Antioch, but a forward deployed location in Ephesus. And after he, he leaves Ephesus, he goes down to Caesarea and then to, to, to Jerusalem. That's his second missionary journey. And that's where we believe Luke started to be um, working with Luke, and we see a transition in what Luke wrote as he starts to use we because he's actually with Paul on those trips. And here we have his third missionary journey, where once again he starts in Antioch, traces fairly closely for a period of time for his secondary um, missionary journey, but, but he then goes to Ephesus and then goes around all the way to, to Corinth um then circles back comes down here and then eventually goes back to um to palestine and back to jerusalem similar to to what he did in his second missionary journey so those are just a couple of things to be mindful of um, how paul did his um, missionary work and some of the, the wonderful charts and materials that we can be leveraging from the ESV study Bible. Jim, the Zoom link's not working. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording there. I think um, I was hearing that there might be some issues with the link. So I'll stop and then I'll end this meeting and then I'll start it again.